So this is my project on biofuel and the biofuel that I chose is ethanol. So just a quick little intro to ethanol. It's organic compound is CH3CH2OH and it's a renewable fuel that's low cost and it's usually made from various plants known as biomass like corn or potatoes or anything with starch and sugar in it and the most popular use it's used in is gasoline. So its biological source is from biomass feedstocks, usually with high starch content like corn or potatoes. And if it has a higher concentration of starch, it'll make it a shorter process of production because they can get more ethanol out of it. Its fuel production, it starts with a pretreatment and releases hemolyse sugars. Then it moves into hydrolysis where it breaks cellulose sugars into sugars and then into fermentation where the sugars are fermented into ethanol. The lignin is recovered and it's used to produce energy to power the process. And then it moves into thermochemical conversion by adding heat and chemicals to the biomass feedstock to produce syngas and syngas mixed with a catalyst and reformed into ethanol. And then that's when we get our ethanol that we use in gasoline and the fuel availability is widely available especially across the United States 90% of gasoline contains ethanol in it and that's where we use it the most is within gasoline and the most common is E10 which is about 10% ethanol with 90% gasoline but there's also E85 and E15 available the carbon footprint for ethanol is that there is fewer emissions and it's also better for the environment because it contains fewer volatile components than gasoline does, which means fewer gas emissions from, the, from evaporation and it reduces carbon monoxide emissions with even t only 10% of ethanol. And it's considered to be better than traditional gasoline and it produces lower carbon dioxide emissions. So the economic impact, it creates job opportunities in rural areas where you may be out in rural areas like farms and just small, smaller towns. And ethanol production accounts for 73,000 jobs across the United States. It has 52.1 billion gross domestic product and 28.7 billion in household income. And ethanol and gas can also lower the gas prices since inflation and the gas prices are rising, like adding more ethanol can reduce those gas prices. So it affects everyone and not just those who are producing ethanol. The communication of the use. So they don't communicate it a lot or how it's used in gas, but most gas pumps communicate how ethanol, like the concentration of it in the gas. So like this example, it says contains 10% ethanol, but some cap gas pumps have options to choose the ethanol content in the gasoline, but also there's not enough communication of the benefits that ethanol proves. Like most people don't know that it's better for the environment, and I think that would be better communicated be better communicated. So some of the next steps I would do is to encourage drivers to fill up with gas containing ethanol and not just pure gasoline. I would increase the ethanol content in gasoline and use more E85 and E15, which is more concentration of ethanol within gasoline. And also integrate ethanol into 100% of the gasoline. So it still is widely available and 90% of gasoline has ethanol in it, but I think if we bump that number up to 100, it would reduce emissions of harmful emissions even more. So my plan of action would be, if money was like not in the equation, my plan of action would be to produce and integrate enough ethanol to make gas and have a content of E85, which means there's 85% ethanol instead of only 10% and to inform the public more on the benefits of using ethanol gas instead of using per, pure gasoline because most people don't know that it is better and I don't think that's communicated very well. And here are my citations, thank you.